Repulsion is the first chapter in Andrea's 1987 book Intercourse, which you probably won't be surprised to hear is about intercourse. The radical feminist thought women's oppression was perpetrated and perpetuated through a number of major social institutions and sexual intercourse was one of these. In this chapter, she uses Tolstoy and figures connected to him through one of his short novels to illustrate a way, perhaps the way, that men think about and treat women. The chapter starts with Alma Mahler, wife of the composer Gustav Mahler, and describes from her diaries via her biographer how when Gustav wanted intercourse, he would wait until Alma was asleep and then take it. One night he came to her awake, and before he fucked her, told her to read Leo Tolstoy's novel, The Kreutzer Sonata, the theme of which is a husband's cold and indifferent sexual use of his wife, culminating in his murdering her. Andrea says that Leo's story is autobiographical, based on his marriage to his wife Sophie. When Leo and Sophie married, he was 34, and she was only 18. They had 13 children. Six of their children died of illnesses. Sophie raised, fed, and educated all these children. Also managed Leo's estates, money, and copyrights, published his books, and negotiated with the state censors over their publication. Leo did not help with the children at all or provide Sophie with any relief from her labors. He fucked her when he liked, although he aspired in some vague sense to chastity. By shifting between the text of the Kreutzer Sonata and Sophie's diaries, Andrea is able to piece together a picture of their long and unhappy marriage, and the crucial role played by intercourse in it. Sophie wrote of Leo's terrible coldness, total indifference to her after intercourse, which continued until he wanted intercourse again. Sophie wrote in her diary that physical love meant to her uh, something very much akin to suffering. He fucked her until he was 81, only a year before he died. Sophie endured 47 years of mostly, if not entirely, unwanted sex, the worst kind of sexual objectification. If women's oppression lies in the extraction of her service by and for men, as T. Grace Atkinson, Marilyn Fry, and others thought it did, then Sophie is a near-perfect example of this oppression. Leo's view of woman in general is something to be desired. She is an object, a body, a symbol, something to have. Equal relations between man and woman are impossible. Even in marriage, a man cannot truly love. And on this point, Andrea is in agreement with Shulamith Firestone in Firestone's 1970 book, The Dialectic of Sex. Andrea thinks that Leo understands the destructiveness to women of sexual exploitation. He writes in Kreutzer Sonata that women's enslavement depends on the fact that people see women as a tool of enjoyment and that they think it is good to do this so that even if they liberate her and educate her, there she is still the same humiliated and depraved slave and the man still a depraved slave owner. So this is Andrea quoting uh, Leo Tolstoy. He even notices that women are taught to regard themselves this way, that they internalize their own oppression. So Andrea is interested in the chapter in Leo's repulsion by Sophie, his inability to restrain his sexual desire, and then his guilt and self-loathing once he has yielded to it. The way that this makes him see her and treat her, and what this tells us more generally uh, about man's relation to woman. So she writes... Tolstoy's repulsion for women as such is not modern either. Now this repulsion is literal and linear, directed especially against her genitals and also her breasts, 
also her mouth, newly perceived as a sex organ. It is a goose-stepping hatred of cunt. The woman has no human dimension, no human meaning. The repulsion requires no explanation, no rationalization. She has no internal life, no human resonance. She needs no human interpretation. Her flesh is hated. She is it without more. This might seem confusing. If women are for men to fuck, then why should a man feel repulsed, hateful, guilty after he has fucked her? Why doesn't he merely feel satisfied? A good parallel might be to food. Someone trying to lose weight and or get healthy might feel a strong desire for something unhealthy and delicious, be unable to resist that desire, gorge themselves on the food, and then afterward feel sick, repulsed, remorseful. This complicated set of emotions gives us an explanation of men's rage against women based on a reversal in the understanding of who has power. So Andrea writes that woman as a virgin is the highest state and that she falls from grace by being fucked. She becomes a thing. She is used as a thing and she even dresses up to be the thing. But here is the reversal. This reduction of humanity into being an object for sex carries with it the power to dominate men because men want the object and the sex. The rage against women as a group is particularly located here. Women manipulate men by manipulating men's sexual desire. These trivial, mediocre things, women, have real power over men through sex. Because men desire women, they see women as having power over them. This would be like the compulsive overeater being angry at the food for tempting him. But it's equally delusional in both cases. Just as the cake doesn't have agency and so cannot be doing anything to you, so too many women are just going about their lives, while men project onto them that they are temptresses. And even those who are temptresses, who exploit the opportunities made available by what men think women are and want them to be, those women are just acting out a view of women created by men. So men make women into sexual objects and then hate them for controlling their sexual desires. Andrea writes that Leo hated intercourse because of what it did to him how he felt wanting it, doing it, being done with it. He hated Sophie because he fucked Sophie. So on this view, one of the novel's characters is right to think that as long as men desire women for intercourse and women are used as sexual objects, regardless of laws and other public reforms, women's real status will be low, degraded. The thought is there cannot be equality between persons when one is drawn to the other, uses her, and then is repulsed by her immediately afterwards. In the preface Andrea added to the book in 1995, she comments on this idea, that sexual experience has been based on dominance, on the eroticization of differences in power that make force a natural part of sex, so that the end of male dominance would mean the end of sex as we know it. And if you've watched Kate's video talking about McKinnon on sexuality, this idea will be familiar. So this is not the view, often misattributed to Andrea, that all men are rapists and all intercourse is rape. But it is the view that a lot would have to change about intercourse and the relations of the sexes for intercourse not to be deeply morally compromised. <laughs>